good to have all of you here uh, as uh, Saurabh mentioned. I'm going to make some commitments, Saurabh, on behalf of NASCOM, right, what, what we're going to do next year in, in this event. Uh, you know, when we talk about uh, corporate social responsibility, I think we probably, are in this industry in particular, should distinguish now that whether it is corporate social responsibility or a responsibility. And I believe it is a responsibility now. Uh, you know, we keep talking about demographics of India and how that demographic is the biggest asset we have because today if you look at our demographic structure, it's a pyramid like this with more young people below. 20 years from now, it will just about shrink a little bit, uh, but we still have a very large number of young people. And when you look at the rest of the world, right, we have aging population and we think there's a demand supply gap. Uh, when we open the newspaper, right, we hear about how many million telephones we sold or mobile phones we sold in one single day. The last quarter, we sold 25 million uh, mobile phones. Uh, we have 253 million mobile phone connections running, right, so sounds like a great story. And obviously, if 253 million mobile connections are there, some of them have touched rural areas. And surely, when I look at my own household and you have, you know, in India, a driver, somebody, uh, somebody coming and selling vegetables across, the person who is a newspaper vendor, and surely when you see them all connected up, right, they're connected up with their villages, I think that did that technology make a big difference. But I, I was surprised that while we are having our NASCOM meeting today, in one of the newspapers, somebody put up a headline, correct or not correct, but partly would be correct, that 30% of our youth are illiterate. So what are we talking about? This pyramid is changing and so on. We talked about a demand supply gap. Are these youth going to become a problem for us later? Is it going to be a social problem that the rest of the world has so much need for people and resources and skills, whereas we are oversupplied, but they are they are not there. So I think for us it's not a choice of having among the ten activities something that you put in the balance sheet, put it in the tenth page there, saying this is what we did in corporate social responsibility. I think that's required. Any difference anyone can make to the society is good to do, but I think from our perspective as industry, I think it's a must to do. Uh, when we reflect back and we did discuss uh, just day before yesterday in our own meeting, we had set aside a target for NASCOM in 2010 of saying, you know, uh, how we'll make India as the preferred destination. We also had a target which we said that in 2010 we'll achieve $60 billion of revenue, right? So I guess we'll achieve that. But is that all? So we committed ourselves to saying that we're going to review our vision for the next 10 years. And that next 10 years vision, while it will talk about what will happen in IT, one of the things that in that vision would be what impact we make in a society. And I think that's going to be a major driver for us among the various initiatives and the various missions and visions that we'll create for ourselves. So, you know, while CSR is necessary to have, we're going to be talking about how it is essential and it will become part of, uh, of our value. And I think in that, uh, one of the key points that we must include is how we're going to engage the youngsters in our organizations. I think they have passion. I think to get money and funding, I'm sure there are lots of agencies which will provide the funding and we need more and more of that. But I think we also need our youngsters to get engaged in this. You know, it's very heartening and I'm, I'm sure uh, Rufina will pick up those statistics and over this year we will talk more about it. When we hear these stories in my own company that I used to run, I have two cases where the person who joined uh, was the first graduate of a village. He was the first graduate of a village. His first job of the first graduate of the village was in Hewlett Packard. It wasn't a small job that he got. He was in a multinational. And among those two, one of them, six months later, was sitting doing technology transfer in Japan. What did it mean? I think we changed the whole aspirations of that village. And I think that kind of stuff, I heard a story the other day about this girl who has joined one of our member companies, right, very bright person. She lived in a house which was a slum as we call it. It was built over a drain. They had put planks and a mem three member, a five, five member family used to live in it and she has two younger sisters. She has ensured that with the savings she makes, she has taught them and no longer 
those people live in those cities. So while I think you saw some of the changes that have been made, but I think that's what this IT industry could do by taking on those people, changing the whole aspirations, changing the families, and I think we have many more stories going ahead like this. And then the question is, when you talk about corporate social responsibility, it always turns out to be uh, a charity that you're doing something by giving money. But I think there is, it's a commercial venture, and uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, we'll have Jerry talk a little bit more about it or, you know, I think today we are experimenting and those experiments have been very successful that you saw some bright people in this movie where the work that we do here by just changing processes, how can we do economic activity back in those areas, rural areas, and I think the experiments have shown that as long as we have connectivity, we can do it. Uh, I must give you this last example of, uh, a person who said, you know, there were these advertisements that TV had reached every village, uh, and the TV advertisements are largely around consumer products, and it was about shampoos and so on. So the women in the village uh, were having, you know, they, they could use shampoos. So this person came up with a product and a model where he changed the entire model that even today, for as low as two cents, can you believe two cents, right? They sell a sachet of a shampoo in the village, it goes through the supply chain, there are people who make money, this company is making money, but there is a way that you can convert everything that we are saying as an economic activity and as something which is. So I, I think we need to just raise our own expectations, right, move away from calling it charity and CSR to making it as part of our agenda and sort of what I wanted to commit uh, looking at uh, the well, there's almost two thirds when they're not full, that we would change our model next year, and this will be a plenary session. Thank you very much.